Best managed to escape the Nova party with his life. He is with me in the studio now. Yoni Dilla, welcome. <clears throat> what a story. Uh, tell us what happened on October 7th. Um, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's not as simple to say it really quick. I'm uh, sure. Take I, your time. We have time. Look, what I usually say is, you know, I was just in the right place in the right time, uh, and I'm just lucky to be alive, and I'm here. But I would say that um, there are a few incidents in the whole uh, Nova event that basically saved my life and the partner that was with me, Nadav, um, and a few decisions uh, that saved our life. And uh, it started with uh, seeing an injured girl coming from, uh, from the direction of, of Reim uh, south. She came from, from the exit where we were supposed to go out. Um, well, initially we wanted to go north. Uh, where most of the people went out, uh, but they were shot uh, because they were they encountered the terrorist and they shot him like in a like in a duck range. Mm -hmm. So we went we went south uh, to find alternative ways. Before knowing that terrorists are invading us, we just saw there was a lot of traffic. Um, again, three thousand people were trying to get out. There was a lot of honking, and uh, so we see this girl coming from the south and coming with a car. All our cars full of bullets um, and she tried to get out we tried to help her she was shot on her left knee on top of her left knee uh, her name was Shani Gabay mm. um, and actually this the last week I've heard that uh, they found her body uh, in not too long ago they found her body and she's dead I, I, I was sure she was kidnapped and there's some hope uh, so I would say that Seeing Shani coming from the south, uh, shot, and we tried to help her, give her water, do everything we could at that moment, um, kind of saved our life because we understood that there's danger coming from the south area as well. Because what happened was the terrorists tried to do a 360 on us. They tried to come from the north, from the south. To surround you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now, I wouldn't understand that without seeing Shani coming from the south and then later on hearing gunfire coming from the north. So... All these incidents kind of triggered and my intuition said, you know, just leave the car here, leave everything here, just go to the to the valley next by. We were hiding there for, for quite a few time. And and then we walked uh, for like more than four hours to a safe place, to a village called Patish in Moshav. Uh, it was a group of us, another dozen, a few dozens of people. Uh, so we were walking for a lot of, for a long time until we found help. So, yeah, look, I'm, I'm sure there are people that have uh, horrific stories, hiding under bodies, uh, mm -hmm. their friends' bodies, seeing people killed in front of their eyes. I've seen things that, again, I don't, I don't wish anyone to see. Um, but, you know, the more I share the story, I believe the stronger I get and the more confidence I get. And I think people deserve to know the truth. So I'm just representing the people who can't say these things, you yeah, know, because... representing the families. And so... Yeah. So many people didn't live to tell the tale. Of course, more than 350 were murdered. And, and there is, um, uh, outrageously, um, a lot of misinformation around people trying to downplay or outright deny what happened on that day. Um, so I understand that you've taken it upon yourself to go and talk about your experiences and to tell the truth about what happened that day on, on university campuses. Correct. Um... Look, it all started with, uh, it was a short time after October 7th. I was invited to be part of this uh, special delegation going to the U.S., uh, meeting with, uh, with politicians uh, from the Congress, uh, just telling what really happened, not making a political delegation, telling what happened. And later on, uh, independently, I, I was invited to one of the campuses. It started with NYU. Uh, no, it started with Columbia, then I went to NYU. And later on, I was invited to other campuses such as Yale and Princeton, Harvard, MIT. So I took the train from New York and I started going from places just telling my story and giving the students a, a feeling of hope and self-confidence, well, which that many like? don't, don't have in these times, unfortunately. Yeah, well, of course, we've heard Jewish students saying they don't feel safe on campus. And, and we've seen all the, you know, scenes of anti-Semitic crowds chanting, uh, globalize the intifada and uh, gas the Jews and all the rest of it. I mean, was that a, your experience? Did you experience any hostility like that? Look, I've, most of the lectures I've done 
um, were in front of uh, the majority were were Jews, some Israelis, but there was also people that weren't necessarily on our side. And I would say that my advantage over another advocacy ambassador, I would call it, um, is just me telling the story and not trying to preach people and talk about politics or history. I'm not here to give any history lessons or giving uh, talking about politics, which I can very easily, but it's not the point. The point is talking about what, what happened October 7th, the facts, as well show him also the videos that I've taken in the event. And just make people understand that, you know, they could, if I survived it um, and I could tell the story, um, anyone can really just comprehend what really happened. And it's pretty, um, I would say, frustrating to see that even in nowadays, in 2023, people refuse and deny the fact that, like, the Nova uh, massacre happened. 